Here's the scary part, guys. This is a bit we all hate doing. We've got to work on our CPU. So, thankfully Sega have um, done their usual nice trick and marked everything for us. And you'll see down this end here, we've got pin one. Nice little one mark there. And what you need to do is count along 15 pins, and it's pin 15 right here. This is the one we've got to work on. What you're best to do is we're going to get this leg lifted out or cut in half or whatever's going to work and um, we're going to get our original clock point, uh, our original clock speed from the point down in there where it actually comes out of and we're going to lift the leg up and out of the way a bit so we can solder onto that. So um, yeah, yikes, let's get on with it. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to get um, as much of the solder out of the way as what I can. So I've done my usual trick already, just so I didn't um, forget where it is and I've actually already put a little bit of solder on there. So yeah, we'll get rid of some of the solder. Okay, so um, I'm just going to use a bit of my solder braid here. And I'm just going to try and just suck a bit of the solder out from there. But I just want to do this quickly, I don't want to put a lot of heat on here for too long. I can see a little bit of a hole forming there, so I've got a lot of it out. So um, now we're going to make the uh, decision whether we're either going to try and pry this out or whether we're going to just look at cutting the pin in half. So I'll just see how much movement's in it. Yep, it's going to move, so just very carefully. So now, a little bit tricky, but we'll be able to get in under there and solder our wire for our factory speed, and we'll be able to attach our wire, which is going to go after our switch, to the leg that comes out of the CPU. So, there we go. We've done the hard part, we can stop sweating. It's all, uh, all gravy from here. Alright, this might be a little bit tricky for you guys to see, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in under here, and um, I'm just going to blob just a little bit of solder on the original point that it came out of. Not heaps, because we don't want to have it falling through. And now I'm just going to very gently come in and I'm going to use a yellow wire here for our original speed. So I'm just going to come and just tap that into there. And there we go. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach another wire to this leg. So I'll just blob a little bit of solder onto this. And once I've got my wires attached, I'm going to pack it with uh, our good friend hot glue so that um, this leg's got support because we don't want to be pulling on this while we're moving our switch and everything around and uh, yeah, have it snap that leg off. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly add a white wire to our um, leg that's going to our CPU and this white wire well sorry let me start again the yellow wire is going to carry our original factory clock speed our 7 megahertz clock and our white wire is going to go to our switch right so that's attached it's a pretty terrible angle but um, you can see the not really touching, which is exactly what we need, but it's made uh, nice contact there. And uh, I'm just going to pack some hot glue on that now, so that um, that leg has got plenty of support. Just a nice little blob over top. So, we'll let that set, and then uh, that'll be safe for us to start moving around. Okay, so uh, the glue's set, and as you can see I've got a nice little package sitting up on top of my CPU here. This is our, um, our little Vero board that we've made up and I've just put a little bit of hot glue down and just basically stuck it to the top of the CPU. Um, you can put it wherever you want, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, but again, you've got to keep the wires short. So, to recap so that you don't get confused, neither do I, out of our 
Vero board, we've got a blue wire. Now this has got our 10 megahertz clock on it. From our motherboard, we've got a yellow wire, which has got a 7 megahertz clock. Okay? And to the leg of our CPU, we've got a white wire. So basically these three wires here, that's one switch. The white wire is going to go to the center, and then the yellow on one side and the blue on the other. Okay, so getting the easy ones out of the way first. Um, our power and ground now, it needs 5 volts and it needs ground. And as you would have seen in my other videos, there's ground points all over the motherboard. Um, so you can use whatever you like. And um, if you're doing this with this mod and with other mods, then you'll be able to actually run a um, an extra 5 volt feed out of the voltage regulator. But in my case, um, this machine's already modded. I'm doing this overclock afterwards. So right next to the CPU, there's a capacitor there. The positive leg, which is where our 5 volts is, has got a big plus sign on it that you can see there. And of course the other side's negative. So what I've done is I've actually just added a bit of extra solder to the top of it and then um, just soldered my wire straight onto there. So that's nice and convenient, keeps it easy. Um, yeah. Right, we'll move on, get the rest of it attached. Okay guys, so we're looking at the back of our double pole, double throw switch. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at getting our wires attached. Now, if you haven't used one of these switches before, um, the thing to know is that basically, it's just like have it, just imagine you've got two single pole switches sitting side by side. So the top row of contacts, they don't contact each other. They basically are just going to go down in a straight line, like regular switches. So these two here have got no contact, um, which means that on one side we can have our overclock and on the other side we can have our LED. So what I'm going to do is, um, I don't know how easy this is going to be to show you because it's, it's pretty awkward soldering to these, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dart along and just add some um, some solder to each leg to make it nice and easy and once I've got them all attached I'll um, come back and add some hot glue to insulate it all. Now when you're soldering to switches, I've said this before, um, you know only keep the heat on for a couple of seconds. Now you actually find with some switches, um, especially some of the better branded ones, that they'll actually give you a rating. They'll say that it can stand 200 degrees for um, three seconds or something like that and it, it is actually important um, if you keep the heat on there too long you'll find that th these contacts will actually just melt and fall out and go all over the place right now keeping our wires as short as possible um, you've still got to be able to put the lid back on so don't cut it too short but if you remember the yellow wire that's our factory 7 megahertz clock, okay? So I'm going to attach that first. I'm going to put that just into the top one here. Okay, so quite hard to see, but um, what I've done is I've just attached the um, 10 megahertz wire to the bottom leg. Okay, so I'm just going to attach the white wire now, which goes off to our CPU. And there we go. So, really awkward to sort of try and still be able to solder this and actually be able to show you as well, but you can see what I've done there with the uh, Yellow wire is going to the top, that's our 7 megahertz. The white wire is going to the centre, that's our CPU. And the blue wire is going to the bottom. So that there will now control our overclock. And I don't know how well you can see, but our wires are that short. They're very short. Okay, remember under 3 inches, really important. Okay, now the other side of the switch we're going to use for switching our LED. So if you're not doing this bit, you can uh, skip ahead or tune out or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I want, um, because this machine I imagine is probably going to be overclocked most of the time, um, I want the power light to look normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder the 
red wire down to the bottom. And the red wire is for our the red side of our LED. Okay, so that goes down to the bottom. The white wire comes from our Vero board and um, that's carrying our three volts. So that's gonna go into the center. Okay, and lastly, for the green light, I'm gonna use a green wire and that's gonna get attached to the bottom one. So when it's back to normal and all, all's okay, it's going to show a green light. So there we go, so that is our switch wired up. Okay guys, time to get this LED sorted out. So, I've got a red and green LED here, and you'll see that they've got three legs, okay? Now, I just, I don't know if you can um, see this very well, and I'm, I'm going off memory here, so um, I, I might have this wrong, but if I remember rightly, the longest leg is your ground, that's obvious because it's the centre one. But you'll see how the other two legs are still different lengths. And the longer one here, that's red. The shortest one is green. If you um, want to make sure you get it lined up right. Okay, so I've just uh, trimmed up the legs on my LED. And I'm just going to quickly sit some solder onto each leg so it's nice and easy to solder to. Okay, so now we've got our um, three legs attached. Um, I'm just going to coat the whole lot in hot glue um, just to make sure that our LED doesn't uh, ever fall out ever again. And also to insulate the legs from the, um, the metal shielding that's going to live just underneath it. Okay guys, so uh, we'll give it a test. We've got our uh, copy of Sonic sitting in here. The TV's on. And I've got the switch in a down position, which means it's overclocked. And uh, when we turn this on, our power LED is red, if you can see. Okay, and our machine's still working, excellent. And what I'll do is I'll just turn the machine off, and we'll put it back to our clocks, oh, our standard 7 megahertz speed. You see the light's now green. So nice and easy to tell on the front what it's doing and where you've left the switch if you, you know, haven't played there. <laughs> so you go. If you haven't played the um, machine in a few days, you can remember where you left it. So um, there you go. I won't um, show you the benefits of the overclock. Um, like I say, go and watch Thomas's videos. Um, he'll, he actually sits down, plays the games, shows you the difference. So um, hopefully I've been able to compliment Thomas's video and give a few extra pointers for you guys. And um, as always, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you again soon.